outside of this house to give my contribution to budget 2021. A path to recovery, economic dynamism, and resilience. A budget that truly reflects the epitome of visionary policies, plans, and programs of our government. It is one that will certainly see the resuscitation of our economy, the improvement of livelihood for all Guyanese, and most of all, one that will create a solid foundation for a sustainable e economic development that will help secure the future for many generations to come. Mr. Speaker, before I proceed further in this debate, permit me to register my sincere gratitude to the Honorable Senior Minister in the Office of the President with responsibility for finance, Dr. Ashni Singh, and his hard-working team for their unwavering dedication and commitment in preparing a people's budget. Mr. Speaker, after occupying my seat in this honorable house for the past three days, it is difficult to not notice the many delusional and misleading statements coming from the honorable members of the coalition opposition as they lauded the hard work and development undertaken by their government. Like every other Guyanese, I am convinced that the only hard work they have done was to work hard on destroying the economy of this country. They worked hard to empty the pockets of the working class in a poor and ordinary man by adding so many taxes, to basic food items, and many other entities. They worked hard on creating employment by firing 7,000 sugar workers and 2,000 Armenian CSOs, and that is why Today, they can only boast of work that are a mere figment of their imagination. And it is evident that they are competing with the fictional characters of the famous fairy tale books, Alice in Wonderland and Pinocchio. The distortions of their perception of change, a good life, and progress is insanely unbelievable and a blatant insult to the intelligence of every Guyanese, and more so their own supporters. The untruths fueled by the coalition opposition is venomous and shameful, and it is sickening to see that the very political party that plundered the public purse did nothing for our country, stand there without remorse, knowing fully well that it was under their government many families went to bed without a meal. Persons lost their place of abode, our school children drops, dropped out of schools. The dreams of many young people to attend a university, to achieve higher learning, were shattered simply because the children of the cronies or party members became a high priority. To my fellow young people and all right thinking Guyanese, I implore you to remain cautious and conscious of what the APNU AFC coalition stands for. It is anti-progress, anti-cohesion, anti-youth development, anti-poor people, and most of all, anti-democracy. I wish to tell you always be reminded that it was under the very coalition government you did not enjoy a good life as promised. Opportunities and employment became foreign to them, healthcare, education, Agriculture and major sectors collapsed under their watch. And most of all, democracy was under siege for five long months. Your basic right to freedom of choice was held hostage simply because of an uncaring and kleptocratic government. Be watchful. Our future generation must never endure what we endured under the APNU AFC coalition and certainly should never have their right to freedom of choice violated or held hostage. Mr. Speaker, I now turn my attention to the health sector. Mr. Speaker, it is no secret that under the previous administration, like many other sectors, 
the health sector had suffered immensely due to mass corruption and mismanagement of public funds. We saw the lack of basic medication countrywide, crippling of basic healthcare services such as ultrasonography, x-rays, basic laboratory tests such as biochemistry, serology, amongst others. Today, under this government, we have the pleasure to revamp this sector under the stewardship of the Honorable Minister, Dr. Frank Anthony, who understands and knows the importance of the delivery of quality health care to a nation. Our health sector will receive a whopping $53.5 billion, one of the largest in many years. And this simply means that every program within the Ministry of Health, such as maternal and child health care, mental health, chronic disease, reproductive health, just to name a few, will benefit extensively from this allocation. A total of $70 billion will be allocated to replenish the shortage of medications for psychiatric patients. Additionally, programs will be implemented to address mental health and suicide prevention with an extension to hinterland communities. Mr. Speaker, our high-risk expected mothers in areas such as Maruka, Cato, and Enmore will be able to benefit from maternal waiting homes provided for them at the cost of over $140 million. Mr. Speaker, we recognize the importance of safe and modernized infrastructure that will aid in the delivery of reliable and high standards of healthcare services. And that is why $2.8 billion has been allocated to ensure same. Of this, the Smart Hospital Project at Leonora Lethem Paramakatoi, Mabaroom, and Diamond will see upgraded services. Clearly, this is a visionary path that our government will embark on to ensure no community, big or small, is left behind, as was done under the previous government. Mr. Speaker, our health sector has been plagued with a large number of non-functional or faulty medical equipment in various health facilities. This will be resolved because $1.8 billion has been allocated to purchase critical medical equipment to furnish this void. Mr. Speaker, as we continue to combat the COVID-19 pandemic, our government remains committed in protecting the well-being of our healthcare workers, our population at large, and to roll out vaccination with the goal of achieving herd immunity by the end of 2021. To show our appreciation, already our healthcare workers have received a two weeks bonus plus a $25,000 one-off cash grant, and this was also extended to all public servants. The accessibility to PPE sanitizing agents, COVID-19 test kits, and other medical supplies will improve significantly as compared to what was provided by the previous government at the discovery of patient zero in mid-March 2020. Our administration has also acted responsibility, responsibly and ramped up testing from conducting 21 tests daily to over 200 tests with a capacity of over 2,000. Mr. Speaker, a total of $750 million has been allocated to support the rolling out of the COVID-19 vaccines, which will see healthcare workers, the elderly and persons with comorbidities being the first recipients. And already our healthcare workers have benefited from the first batch of the COVID-19 AstraZeneca vaccine. Mr. Speaker, these are only some of the developments to be expected within our health sector for 2021. And I'm sure the Honorable Minister, Dr. Frank Anthony, will, will elaborate more on this. Mr. Speaker, as one of the geographical MPs representing region number three, I must say to mention 
that this region was neglected by the previous administration is an understatement because immediately after getting into office in 2015, Region 3 became completely invisible to them. The evidence of not one new housing scheme in the entire Region 3, the deplorable state of roads and inadequate or no water supplies in places such as Wakenham, Leg 1, Tushin, Zilat, Parika, and just to name a few. The many cries for our house lot from the residents, the single mothers, the fishermen, teachers, nurses, doctors, and others. The unfinished, for example, the unfinished selling at Leg 1 is another example that, they, that under the Afnu government, they never had a plan or could have delivered anything tangible to this nation. Mr. Speaker, as we have discovered in our fact finding, it was found that two x-ray machines were placed at the Perica Health Center and the Leg One Cottage Hospital in a room with no electricity, no dark room, or even proper, proper paper trail of how they got there. The only information available was that they were placed there three years ago, non-functional and gathering dust. While residents suffered and had to reach into their pockets to travel to long hours to either private institutions or the regional hospital to get an x-ray done. This is truly shameful. Mr. Speaker, this will no longer be the state of affairs under the PPPC government. Already road works have begun in Tushin, Zilat, Wakenham, and many other areas in Region 3. Which is only, and this is only the beginning of the good things to come under our government. Mr. Speaker, on December 24, 2020, at a historical event of, of a dream realized housing drive held at the Leonora Track and Field, our Honorable Ministers of Housing and Water distributed 700 land titles and over 1,000 persons received allocations for a plot of land. Mr. Speaker, this speaks volume of what our government stands for. Mr. Speaker, our regional cottage hospitals will receive medical equipment such as new anesthesia machines, ultrasound machines, digital x-ray machines, improved ambulance services, and many other medical supplies. Mr. Speaker, this is what a visionary government does. It looks after the well-being of its people. And as always, a PPP government will ensure that every single Guyanese gets a piece of the pie. We will ensure that no one is left behind. And this includes the honorable members of the opposition, which of course are not here at the moment. Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I think you may have to... I apologize, Mr. Schumann. I, I do recognize your presence. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I wish to comment Budget 2021 because it is a budget that will give relief to every single Guyanese and will restore all of the loss that we had under the previous government. Thank you.